Hello there, thank you for joining me today. Uh, this is a video about uh, calibration of microwave radio test sets. Um, this model in particular is a Marconi microwave radio test set 6200B. Um, it also has at the bottom the tray added for what is S11, S21, four port parameters. Uh, testing which is the 6210 reflection analyzer or vector network analyzer add-on underneath which, uh, which you'll see later display smith chart log um, graphs we can do impedance uh, time domain measurements uh, vswr and loss measurements return loss um, we can do quite a bit with the add-on module at the bottom but it all needs to be calibrated first using uh, what are standards and uh, indeed the detectors the scalar detector which connects into the um, test set that's a scalar detector which connects into port A, B or C on the front of these and then the power detectors um, are these type which connect to port D and they need calibrating as well so we'll go through the calibration procedure and then afterwards we'll show um, what it's like with regards to um, the quality of RF connectors and plugs which people um, unless they see this kind of testing don't realise just how um, poorly made some RF plugs and connectors are and this will demonstrate that um, in the Smith chart as well which we'll look at. Okay, so we've extended the screen of the test set over to um, this monitor here as well so we can see what we're doing better. Now, firstly, what we need to do uh, when the test set's turned on is calibrate the sensors. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use the inbuilt calibration procedure on the, on the test set. And uh, the cal feature on the test set puts out a fixed level RF out of this port which then calibrates this sensor against it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to connect this up um, first. These are often difficult to connect sometimes because the, the classification of these connectors are their precision um, connectors and thus they are extremely difficult sometimes to get the thread on them and, uh, and tighten them up. So if we go to the cowl uh, button, uh, we've got various cowls. Um, we've got obviously a through path cowl, we've got short and open cowl, um, we've got a short or open cowl, we've got um, all kinds of different um, calibrations there that we can do as well as um, sensor cowl as well. Um, so there's quite a bit that we can go into with the calibrations now depending on what measurements you're going to be doing will depend on the calibration that you want to do but for the most advanced measurements and highly accurate ones you want to do all of them um, but that's not necessarily needed for just basic measurements because um, obviously it stores the last cal within its memory whenever that took place but for a more up to date cal you may wish to, to recalibrate uh, and indeed the reflection analyzer that's at the bottom here won't work anyway unless you've done a cowl. So it only makes sense really to, to do a cowl. So we'll, we'll do a, um, a power cowl um, using the sensor cowl feature here at the bottom. And uh, we'll, we'll highlight the sensor cowl. And then it says here, now we've got all the data which is on the side of these uh, sensors inputted in already into the table the cal factor table on the test set um, and so as you can see there every um, every instrument every instrument sensor has its own um, has its own table if you like on the sensor which you have to input into the test set and that then will allow it to um, calibrate correctly with its linearity and calibration factor across the whole frequency range from 
10 megahertz to 20 gigahertz um, it's the same procedure with the other test sets as well the 6204B uh, which goes up to 46 gigahertz you have to perform the same types of measurements with with that as well so we've got um, the power uh, detector connected to the um, port we can now do um, a calibration so we'll select continue and now it's zeroing the sensor and then what it will do after it's zeroed it it will apply sample RF power level to the end type um, calibration port that the, the sensor is plugged into and it will uh, what it will do then is it will use that power reference to calibrate the the sensor and that's what it's going to do now so it's just calibrating the sensor using that um, source power and uh, once this is done then that means that that power sensor is correctly um, correctly calibrated then for use so it will measure power correctly okay so that's sensor calibrated that's done okay so as well as that we've got um, quite a lot of um, different calibrations that we can do now obviously these are power detectors that connect into port D and they're different to scalar detectors because these either have a thermocouple um, sensor in them or they have a, um, a detector diode within them and that all depends on what frequency they're being used at so for example on the 6204 46 gigahertz microwave test set it uses the thermocouple uh, power detector whereas on the this model the 620B models it uses the up to 20 gigahertz it uses a diode detector power sensor so there are differences same with Hewlett Packard HP Agilent sensors a lot of those use um, um, thermocouples at most of their frequency ranges this is a scalar detector which is different to a power detector um, this doesn't measure RF power in the same context as a RF power detector does uh, the scalar detector is a different sensitivity it's very highly sensitive and it can't take much RF power at all indeed it's only designed to work in the output level range of the test set um, and so naturally if the output um, level is too high you can severely damage uh, these sensors uh, likewise with the power detectors well, it doesn't take much power to to make these fail and so as part of doing the calibration procedures on these um, you have an open short cal as we saw earlier uh, if we go back to the cal screen and uh, you have um, fixed standards such as this Anritsu uh, standard here which has a, an open and a short on either end basically so one side short the other side's open and these are a, 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 a specially made precision um, standards that are used when we're calibrating an instrument like this and so we follow that procedure with the um, scalar detectors doing the open short path cowls um, in order to calibrate the the scalar detectors uh, which rarely need to be done to be honest because these are very accurate anyway but obviously if you wish to do that you can do that um, so we'll move on to the uh, now we've calibrated the um, sensors we'll move on to the uh, reflection allies at the bottom so what we'll do we'll go to the um, uh, cal feature again I think let's have a look and then I think uh, we will go to let's have a look see if we can find it we have to switch to the reflection analyzer at the uh, at the bottom, and uh, as usual, sometimes these sub menus are difficult to navigate. 
because what happens is is that um, navigation through to different um, different parts of the system are more difficult than than you think sometimes in order to uh, to get to the reflection analyzer so we'll just have a look see whether we can get back to it and uh, and I think it's reflection analyzer there we found it so that reflection analyzer it's telling us that the source setup uh, has changed as well and as part of this We'll now need to select calibration on the instrument and then we can do a reflection analyzer cal which is up in the top right. Um, we've got different types of cal as well but we've got a, a short open and a fixed load calibration. So we, we're starting at uh, 250 megahertz and we're stopping at 20 gigahertz. We've got a source power of 0 dBm and we're using 401 calibration points as part of that measurement. So how we do that now is um, we then select measure standards which is again in the top right. We've obviously wished to confirm that we wish to do this so that's yes again and then now we can apply a short. So if we look at the um, uh, little Anritsu um, precision standard, we can see there we've got a an open and a short. So to the right is a short, left is the open. So we will connect the short as it's wanting um, to the the part and we'll screw that on and then what we'll do now we'll measure the standard so we'll press measure standard and then what it's doing it's measuring the short um, again these are precision standards you can't just use any old connector or plug you know if you don't have the standards then you're sort of stuck um, there are in some manuals for these test instruments uh, it will give you the dimensions and the profile of plugs and connectors for making your own standards and the, the Marconi test set manual does show you the profile and dimensions so you can machine your own plug or connector if you use an existing plug or connector you can uh, machine it down to the right profiles so that it uh, makes the, the correct standard so it's measured the short now we'll just reverse it the other way around to measure the open, the opposite way around. And obviously when we're doing this as well, making sure that uh, you know the, the, the tight on is not loose. And then we'll measure standard again. It's done that. And then we have a fixed load. Now one of the things you've got to bear in mind when you're connecting a load here is the load has got to be rated for the frequency. Uh, that we are actually going to be using and obviously there's no use choosing a load which doesn't have the correct frequency response um, if it only goes up to 6 gigahertz and you're trying to get it to go up to 20 gigahertz it's obviously not gonna gonna work right because you know this is why it's uh, it's done this way um, so what we'll do we'll connect up a um, one of my other adapters to adapt it to 50 ohms SMA if you just bear with me a second while I uh, while I try and uh, undo this there we go they are difficult sometimes to deal with so we've got the SMA um, load this actually goes up to 20 gigahertz does this load this is a, an Anritsu part and then we can now select measure standard again and uh, there we go jobs done so that now is calibrated properly 
um, we can now go back to because that's stored uh, we can then go to process measurements now to store that into memory which is the top right and now it's going to store that into the calibration memory of the instrument to make sure that obviously everything's all lined up so that it knows that it's um, um, you know open short and load calibrated so th that's now finished um, so for example if we were to uh, go to a bot calibration now um, we've got a save calibration which is again in the top right and then yes on that and then no because you don't want to change the title of it and then it says calibration saved and then now basically we can look at the reflection analyzer um, so the reflection analyzer menus um, I think are under uh, this reflection analyzer um, then we've got let's have a look see if I can see it Managing. Paula Smith and then Smith. So this is representing impedance and at the moment if I connect to 50 ohm load onto the uh, test port which is a calibrated standard this will then show us how accurate that 50 ohm load is and as you can see there if we zoom in slightly in the top right hand corner it's telling us what the impedances of that load and it's bang on more or less 50 ohms if you look at the Smith chart you know we can see there the 50 ohms impedance point is uh, spot on without any um, distortions now if we were to disconnect that obviously this is what happens when connectors are not done up to the right torque you start to see things like that occurring and any um, lack of linearity in a particular connector or plug will show up that way and that represents different frequencies at different impedances so we'll, we'll connect this um, load up as well which I've got and I don't think that's rated to a higher frequency than the one that we've just been on but that will reveal it so there we are that shows us that the actual impedance across the frequency range from um, basically to 20 gigahertz is not actually um, bang on as such it's uh, basically the J is 1.19 and we're getting distortions at different frequencies uh, because we've got a stop frequency of 20 gigahertz and that's simply because if you look in the bottom right hand corner it tells you the stop frequency that load which we've connected there is just not simply rated to that frequency and so it becomes unstable at higher frequencies and so this is the importance to having the correct when you're calibrating instruments like this having the correct standards um, in order to make sure that the test set's calibrated right um, now if you were to look at that on a Smith diagram um, of your own and work out the frequency uh, versus impedance you can see that it starts off at 50 ohms at the low frequencies and then as the frequencies increase it goes way out of phase it starts operating at uh, different impedances at different frequencies and so that's the resultant uh, mess that you get and um, that's just an example of you know where we can end up um, having problems with when you're doing microwave measurements at very high frequencies at, you know up to 20 gigahertz obviously with the other test instruments you can go up higher to up to 46 gigahertz it's really important that you get the right standards and the right um, connectors and plugs and uh, the set to the correct torques and they're kept clean otherwise you end up with all these uh, little problems but this just shows you the difference between a uh, a proper calibrated um, specially made load standard to just a basic common run-of-the-mill 
50 ohm load and the differences and so if we were to reconnect the um, the Amritsu standard back up then we would we would see we've come back to where we should be and uh, that just shows you the difference so I'll come back in the next video where we'll do some measurements using some cheap Chinese connectors and uh, show you the differences there with regard to how poor they are some of the cheaper connectors when it comes to the higher frequencies in the gigahertz range and why it's very important to pay the extra sometimes and buy the better quality connectors by the, the good manufacturers which I shall speak about in the next video so I shall see you soon Thank you very much for watching and if you like the video please subscribe and um, please look out for the next one. Thank you, bye bye.